It's an absolute pleasure and delight to be speaking with ex-Pakistani fitness trainer David Dwyer. Thanks very much, David, for uh, speaking with PackPassion.net. Thank you. Okay, well, uh, we'll start with uh, some fitness-related questions, uh, with, with the team uh, particularly. Which players were most dedicated towards fitness and training? <laughs> uh, I, I wasn't the sort of person that really liked to, um, to single out individual players. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that over, over the time, I'd like to say over the three years, that all of them were very dedicated to it um, in different ways because they had different needs. So you know, there was guys like uh, Kelly Agbal and, and, um, and Salad Bart, uh, Artis and Afiz and, and all these guys who were you know, as well, we were all located in the hall who came daily when we weren't travelling and touring. Mm -hmm. um, and they were involved in domestic stuff. Shab Malik certainly had, um, uh, you know, there were times where Shab just showed a huge dedication to his, to his ability. He's already got, I mean, enormous athletic ability. Mm -hmm. Shahid Afri was someone who was constantly focused on his on fitness and what he wanted to do. Mm. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's just some of the names that I, I really don't certainly lost a finger at any one player. I thought over the time that I had them that we improved dramatically and enormously. They got to really understand why we did it and what we did mm -hmm. and, uh, and feel that, you know, since I've left it, they've been pretty much self-sufficient uh, uh, to assist themselves and make sure that they've been pretty fit. Okay. How, how difficult was it to come up with a fitness plan for each each player in the team? Were, were they given fitness targets for the off-season or would they have to start from scratch when they joined the team again? In some ways it was difficult because, I mean, it was the first time that I'd been involved with the Pakistan team and so I didn't know that all of their players and their abilities and their targets and their needs 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 and their come up with a plan as what their weaknesses and strengths were. We had individual meetings with them and I gave them individual targets mm -hmm. that were agreed upon by the player, myself and the coach. And so we tested them you know, throughout the course of, of the last few years to make sure that we were achieving their targets that they were improving and we'd sit down with them and discuss you know, where they were going right or wrong mm. with their training. Um, so it became quite specific. Was, was a lot different in relation to that um, the, the one thing that, that's difficult is that we have here in Australia, we call it a training age. And um, a lot of, you know, people here in Australia uh, have access to a huge amount of facilities and resources in relation to that. Oh, yep. Um, in Pakistan, they, they don't necessarily have the facilities. In relation to you know, the number and the quality of good gyms that are available, there are some. Mm. Um, and also those people who uh, are good enough to be able to take them through it and talk them through it and, and help them with their training. So, again, that was something that we just had to try and cover as time went by. Mm. And, uh, and then we, over the course of the time, I got to know what their injuries were or what mm. or the injuries. Um, and we treated them individually based on what we thought they needed. Yep. I guess uh, you're talking about the culture as well, I guess. Uh, how how uh, serious uh, do, do, do Pakistani cricketers take their um, eating habits, I guess, their, their, their food and their culture is a bit different? And, and how does that, uh, concept, that have an effect on their level of fitness as well, I guess? Yeah, look, that was, that was possibly the biggest challenge I had was trying to... Uh, Trying to challenge them with their, uh, with their diet, so it was something that was, it was very difficult to change. I'm not going to as much as I tried. Yep. You know, in, in a lot of cases, it's having access to those uh, great foods on a regular basis. I mean, some of them are lucky when we go to places like the, um, like the NCA in Lahore, you know, you, you do have access to these sorts of foods, but even mm. then, um, we suffered a bit because I don't think that the cooks and the chefs really have an understanding of what is quality food and why we have it and what it mm. what it's providing for the players. Um, yeah. you know, in relation to that we go to we went to Fiji just recently and, and, and that was for the Rugby World Cup yep. preparing players for the Rugby World Cup over three or four months. And over that three or four months we go individually and we train him up and um, explain the whole reasons why and mm. it was just one of those challenges that, that 
true quite difficult, unfortunately. Mm. Um, hopefully, over time, I'll improve and, and get a better understanding. Okay. Um, and did was there's some rumours that you you came up with a fitness plan that was actually knocked back by the PCB? Was that true? And if it was, why was it not knocked back? Um, well, yes, I did. I came up with a number of plans. Uh, I, I came up with some some things and options that I thought was worthwhile. You know, looking at trying to instil into their into their contracts um, mm. details of fitness so that they uh, they had to pass two fitness tests a year and based on those targets. And I guess time and again, we, we keep seeing um, new new cricketers, young cricketers come into the side who are lacking in overall fitness. What, why do you think that is, and 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 why why is it not being addressed? I guess. Been away from the side for a little bit, but maybe when you left, uh, what do you think the the current fitness level was of the team uh, when when you, you when you left the team, and a scale maybe of zero to ten or one to ten? Yeah, okay. 
Um, and, and how much work is being done at the domestic level? Are you aware of the work that's being done at the domestic level from on educating cricketers, on gym work, nutrition, uh, etc.? Et yeah, there, there definitely is. Um, when the, the NCI and the police are doing, we're running courses for them. Mm -hmm. And that's all the training for each of the domestic teams that were uh, playing within the domestic competition. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, you, you're talking about fitness trainers in Pakistan. Uh, was there any ones that uh, particularly in impressed you? That... Mm, look, they all, they were all just super keen on it, and that yep. was the best part. They'd always ring, they'd always ask me, they'd send three emails, and, mm -hmm. and I was more than happy to help out where when I could. I did, mm -hmm. as I said before, it's, the most difficult part of their job was um, number one, they didn't have access to facilities. So, yep. strength training was just us an integral part of mm -hmm. what we do. And, I guess uh, we've seen recently, I guess, whether it's luck or, or otherwise, but we've seen a lot of the fast bowlers especially have, have not had as many injuries as we have had in the past. Do you actually say that that, might have, that could be due to the changes that you've, you've put to their training? And uh, I guess uh, on to on to fielding uh, with the Pakistani team, or obviously notoriously poor at, at uh, fielding. Um, do you see the, the link between fitness and uh, and fielding for the players? Mm -hmm. Also, the quality of coaching, so whether or not there's a quality of emphasis that's put on, 
on the uh, shooting team. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're a tough man, it's to want to try and teach you a group of players how to slide across the score <laughs> when they're picking up rocks out of their legs. And, yeah. um, and because of the heat, the, the ground is so hard and dry. Mm. I mean, mm. you, you go to them places like England and Australia and um, yep. in Africa where the ground is beautifully green and soft and, and mm. really well looked after. Um, mm. yeah, and then you got to get the sensitivity performances when you're teaching it because they can learn the right technique. Mm. Yep. So, yeah, look, there he is. Yeah. I mean, if I play his tie, he's not going to bend down as quickly or as often. He's not going to be able to get to the ball. And these are things that we need to pay attention to. But I think in our case, a lot of the, the problems stem from the quality of the facility that we've got to train on yep. and, the, uh, and the coaching techniques perhaps uh, are provided. Yep. Okay. And I'll do a bit of a lighter note. Experience with the Pikes State team. Um, uh, obviously, do you still follow the team? Do you still keep in contact oh, yeah. with the players? Yeah, I talk to two or three of them this morning on email. Okay. <laughs> yep, fair enough. Um, and uh, I guess uh, you, you obviously originally came with with Henry, who's still very popular with the fans and the players. Uh, what made you stay on after his uh, untimely departure? For that, um, you spoke in, uh, uh, very warmly about the, the Pakistani players and, and, and your contact with them. Uh, how did you actually find uh, living and working in, in Pakistan? Uh, obviously, with the security situation and, and whatever, uh, did any did you did it change any um, percep- perceptions you had uh, of Pakistan? Um, and uh, did you get to actually explore some of the sites and, and places and, I guess, the food as well of Pakistan while you were there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when you talk about some of the sites where our training camp up in Bavar, um, prior to the, uh, the Champions Trophy in the 2020 World Cup in the UK, mm. um, it was quite extraordinary being at those heights, uh, mm. you know, at the foot of the Himalayan mountains. Yep. And that's... Um, that's an extraordinary sight. I mean, you're talking about some of the highest mountains in the world. Mm, mm. And you're, um, I mean, some of the food, I mean, I remember going to a, a barbecue in Lahore, um, you know, you're looking at, at, at Eid, yep. um, and some of the foods that come out there, mm. some of the barbecues that we had at the, 
the National Academy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, it was quite extraordinary in some of the restaurants. Down the, the main streets of a hall of, of beautiful stuff. Mm-hmm. Some of the food's extraordinary. <laughs> okay. Uh, would you like to share any any memorable or funny anecdotes uh, during your, your stint with the team? Oh, can you possibly go past uh, any story that's got to do with Yassi Hamid, honestly? Is it? Um, it used to be, it used to be fun. I mean, constantly listening to him come out with some of the silliest things you've ever heard, but some of the funniest, funniest things. Um, and, and there is another person who was wonderful and a nice guy who I speak to occasionally over, over the internet. Um, <laughs> he's hilarious. He's such a good guy. Then Wahab Rea is always on the bus. Yeah. So you're in Salmon Park with some, you know, jokes. So then the a joke that to come out with off the telephone and couldn't to send me some support to those on the bus. So. <laughs> okay. They were, uh, they were some of the highlights, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay. That was nice to hear. And uh, what are some of the nicknames of the Pakistani team players? Uh, we hear Wahab Riyaz called Princess and Shobakhtar Elvis. Is there a, a story behind those nicknames? Or? Uh, oh, I mean, Wahab Riyaz is one of the most popular Yeah, okay. Yep. As much as anywhere else, but the only one that I'm used to here at home. Yeah. Giving people a little bit of, um, a little bit of stick to <laughs> challenge them and keep them honest and down to earth. Wow, I've just grown up in a, uh, probably a, a home where he was afforded a lot of opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's such a very good, uh, good player in his own right. Mm. He, <laughs> he, uh, he was just one guy we liked to give a little bit of treatment too, just to keep him grounded and honest and and calling someone princess meant that they were uh, they were well padded and looked after so yeah. we just wanted to make sure he okay. was down there. <laughs> he was alright with it. He's yeah. always got the new gadgets, the new phones and yeah. stuff. He's, he's never missing a, a, a new gadget. Um, yeah. Elvis, Elvis, I mean, it was more along the lines of uh, Elvis was the biggest thing to ever, one of the biggest Rock stars ever hit the music world, and yep. and, uh, and it just seemed to fit. And yeah. Show back to Okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I just thought it was funny. I mean, there he was. He was certainly pack one of packs between me and Shahida for him. And two of the biggest names in world cricket, let alone Pakistan at the time, mm. when I was there. So uh, yeah, I just figured that, that was sort of a name that we call him. There he is. Elvis was a leader in uh, in music. He's a leader in Okay. <laughs> okay. This is nice to hear. Moving, uh, moving on to the, your rugby World Cup experience. How, how was that were, were experience? Is that your first World Cup as well? That was my first rugby World Cup. Yeah. Okay. It was, uh, it was good. I mean, I, I got to learn a lot. Uh, the, the cultures in relation to sport are completely different. Mm. Uh, in essence, um, your in rugby, the attention to detail is so huge. And it was really, I mean, you're on it, you're on the, not down the ball full time, full time, mm-hmm. especially in a contact sport. Yeah. It was great, I, I enjoyed it, but it was just a little disappointing from a results perspective. I mean, you always yeah. want, just want to go out there and win, but I guess mm-hmm. in the grand scheme of it, we, we didn't quite set, we, we set targets, um, mm-hmm. we didn't achieve as many as we would have really liked to, and from that aspect, you always take it a little personally, you know, mm-hmm. you want to take it as well, especially mm-hmm. because you're involved. And, Look, that happens, but, yeah. um, but it was an incredible experience and one I hope I get to have again. Okay. Um, so obviously we've spoken about rugby, it's, it's your specialist area, but um, you, would you look at con- considering uh, going coming back to cricket as well, or are you open oh, ideas? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've been looking, I've been um, applying for cricket jobs as well as rugby ones, so mm. I, don't, I don't particularly... Uh, want to narrow myself down to one, one sport, I'd like mm. to make sure that um, I can fit the box for every particular sport mm. and um, and really make a difference in that way too, so that cricket is something I certainly like and mm. enjoy, and I would like to be part of it again. Okay.
Um, well, that, that brings us to the end of our interview. Once again, many, many thanks for, for speaking to us. It's been an absolute pleasure and it's been great hearing some of the stories and, and the, the experience that you had. It's always good to hear one from the other side of the story, from uh, outside of Pakistan. So it's been an absolute pleasure. And, um, yeah, we wish you all the best with the, with whatever you, you plan to do in the future. And, uh, and yeah, um, thank you very much again.